Then I would like to invite uh, Dudiva uh, Marina, Vladimir Ronovia. <laughs> Sorry, you'll correct me. Research assistant and PhD student, scientific department of the Russian Secretaries of uh, European Commission for yes, Democracy through <laughs> Law, uh, Institute of Legit Legit Legislation. Legislation and mm -hmm. Comparative Law, Moscow Russian Federation. And mm -hmm. she's going to talk, you're going to say. So, <laughs> welcome. Thank you, thank you a lot. Good afternoon, dear friends, dear colleagues. I really appreciate uh, this day and I'm honored to be here uh, in the so outstanding team. And I hope you enjoy this day as I am. <laughs> so, uh, I would like to present my topic uh, and it is called Impact of Economic factors on it, uh, separatism in Italy, some theoretical and per, uh, practical perspectives. So uh, first of all, I would like to provide you with my plan. So I'm going to clarify the, the terms, the, the terms of separati separatism and secession. Secondly, I'm going to speak about the urgency of the topic. I think you understand that it's very urgent nowadays, especially in the European Union, and not only. Uh, thirdly, I'm going to speak about some theoretical perspective using the model of Alessina and Spolari. And fourthly, I'm going to speak some practical perspective, some practical uh, view using the numbers and statistics uh, based on the Italian case. And fourth, I'm going to make conclusions. So it's my brief, um, brief plan. So first of all, let's clarify the term secession and separatism. I think you understand that se separatism consists of three main movements, like secessionist movement, irredentist movements, and uh, autonomy-seeking movements. Secessionist movements, they aim at creating their own independent state. As for irredentist movements, they aim at uh, joining a neighboring country. And as for autonomy seeking movement, they aim at uh, grab more autonomy and self rule their region. So, secession is the one type of separatism. So, we can get to this conclusion that it is like one outcome of separatism. So, you see that uh, during this century, there are there is an, in, an outstanding increase in separatist movements and in the increase in the number of independent sovereign countries. If we can count, uh, since the creation of the UN, there are 51 uh, countries, independent countries, and now we have like 195 countries. So the main reasons are, we know, we know the main reasons are the decolonization processes, the collapse of the Soviet Union, and of course the separatist movements. It's like one of the main reasons. And you see the factors and the reasons of separatism are changing nowadays. If uh, in the past we see like more religious, ethnic, linguistic factors that influence and activated separatist movements, today we see that mostly economic factors, they are like, the, uh, they dominate. Uh, so as for the Italian case, I would like to specify that Italy is a unique country and it has like, uh, it is based on a special regionalistic system. It's like regionalism. It has like 15 ordinary uh, regions and five special states that have greater autonomy than others. They are like Sicily, Sardinia, uh, Valle d'Aosta, Venice, Lombardy, five. So as for Italy, it is really important because there are official separatist political parties were really active, especially, you know, <laughs> where is my presentation? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the beginning of my speech. This is our plan. This is the main uh, terms, separatism and secession. 
And here you see why it is so urgent. There are these uh, areas with strong nationalist tendencies and separatist tendencies in Europe. And as for Italy, we have like six regions that have real active separatist political parties. And as, uh, on the graph, we can also notice that there is an increase in sub-nationalist and separatist terror attacks in the European Union. In comparison with, for example, 2014, we see a big increase. Now it's like 137 attacks in uh, 2017. So why I, why I chose Italy? Yes, as I have already told you, there are really active separatist political parties. It is one reason, the first reason. And the second reason, there are uh, uh, autonomy referendums. You may remember in Lombardy and in Venice, for example, there are uh, referendums. And 98.1% vote for more autonomy, especially in these big uh, regions. They are really rich, they are independent, and they, they feel that they can be uh, separate. So this is two main reasons. So as for League of North, very, this is the main separatist party in Italy. Now it is called just League. They, they renamed it. But since 1991, they were Northern League and they were more, the most separatist party in Italy. And they wanted to separate the North from the South and create a new uh, country which is called Pada Padania in Italy. But now to, they decided to win the uh, recent elections and uh, they a bit changed their program and the, uh, the ideology and they mostly uh, anti-immigration and eurosceptic program. Right. So here you see the race of uh, this party. This is uh, one second. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this uh, topic is rather urgent today, so uh, especially in Italy. Uh, now I'm going uh, to talk about theoretical perspective using the model of Alessina and Spolari and they uh, specify two main factors when we speak about secession. We need to speak about the size of a country and we need to highlight heterogeneity of population. What do they mean? So as for the size of a country, we know that the cost uh, per capita of a public good decreases when we have a, 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 a lot of individuals, m more individuals. So we have like such phenomenon as uh, economies of scale. So we win. If we are big, we win because of these economies of scale. But the, on the other hand, we see heterogeneity of population. There are different preferences, different uh, people, and it is difficult to satisfy all their needs. So there are two sides of this coin. And Alicina and Spolari, they used all the, uh, they model can be characterized by all these features. First of all, they used indigenous political borders, because it's like ideal economic model. It is easier to count. <laughs> Uh, they used assessment of public goods. They uh, used the point that secession depends on the location of the individual, and I will explain it a bit later. And they use if the citizens are immobile, and there is a symmetric redistribution of income. So, as for the third point that I have already told you about the location of an, in an individual. So, why people uh, on the periphery want to separate or have irredentist movements, maybe. Because they are far from public goods. They are far, but they pay as much as people in the center. And they want to separate because they want to be closer to public goods. Or they want to join the nearest country, just uh, again, to be closer to that public goods. So they win when they want to secede. It, it is like normal. Mm. As for political regime, I would like to skip it because I think it's clear and, and not to waste your time that in democracy we have a uh, like possibility to uh, openers uh, of trade. So we, if we even small, we can win because the, the whole world is globalized and we don't need state level, federal level 
we can be uh, separate because we can have like international connections. That's the main uh, idea. And autocratic governments, they're more closed and in autocratic governments it's it's harder to uh, separate, <laughs> you understand why, and it is harder even to create these connections. So, we see there are advantages and disadvantages of being big, of, uh, of growing. Uh, uh, on the one hand, we see like economies of scale, yes, we win. We have markets that operate smoothly without borders, it's really great, and we have regions that are protected from external shocks, external threats. It's really great. And we have diverse ec economy and it, it avoids structural problems. But on the other hand, what we have like negative sides, we have social fractionalization and it leads to like bureau bureaucracy, uh, it, uh, some burdensome, it is burdensome and Heterogeneous preferences also are really difficult to satisfy, you understand it. And it also leads to protectionism and that is, it reduces all profits and gains from globalization. So we have these two sides of the coin and these op opposing forces account to balance each other. And Alicina and Polari model, they try to explain, uh, to find the equilibrium between them. So, and they, uh, they, this is like conclusion of the model. They pointed out three important effects defining the choice of secession. So a region needs to understand all these three effects, political effect, efficiency effect, and tax bay effect. As for political effect, it shows the difference, the difference in the preferred fiscal policy in the region and the, uh, of the rest of the country. It's ma the main effect, the efficiency effect. Is it better to separate? We need to count. Yeah, we need to count. And because uh, the greatest efficiency loss from secession, the lower the advantage from secession, for, su for sure. And tax base effect. When income is small in the region, then in the unified state, this leads to a cost, supplementary cost of secession for region. So we need to count, especially in this case. And uh, it, it, this is for as for Alicina's Polari model, and this is uh, like short, uh, short introduction of Boyle and Engelbert model. They pointed out four factors, like the which influence secession, regional income and wealth inequalities. Second, regional availability uh, of natural resources. Third, levels of education, and fourth absolute levels of income. They pointed out these four factors. So uh, as for uh, the now practical perspective, Italian case, I have already told you that it is, uh, uh, it is based on regionalism and it is specified in the Constitution 1947. So I'm not going to repeat. I just want to show you some, some numbers. So you see the north of Italy is richer than the south of Italy. And there is a big difference between inequality between them. I will show you the numbers. For example, the highest region is Bolzano Bozen. It's like $51,567. As for lowest region, it is Calabria, $20,323. We see two, uh, two and a half times yeah, the difference. I'll skip it, <laughs> a lot of numbers. So as for in inequality, you can uh, notice that Campania, Sicily, Calabria, Sardinia, all these active separatist movements are situated there. They are all poor regions. And as for Balsarno, Bozen, Venice, uh, Umbria, Lombardia, Liguria, all uh, separatist uh, active uh, political parties are situated also there, and they are the richest, the richest regions. So, we come to the conclusion that regions richer than the average will be more likely to, to exhibit secessionist tendencies 
because they are net contributors of uh, fiscal equalization schemes. They just pay a lot, yes, they're donors. And as for the poorest regions, they want to separate because they want to create their own tax redistribution system. Even if they get money, but they can't it redistribute saf safely, fairly as they want, and they can do it in a case if they have natural resources for sure. And th this is one of the cases uh, of Sicily. They have a lot of natural resources, crude oil production, you see the second uh, in the list. Sicily. As for natural, uh, natural gas production, it's, all, it's also uh, the fourth one, so they can afford it. And I will skip it, it's not important. And as for the size, yes, we notice that all these regions are also really big and they can separate and gain this profit from economies of scale. So they're, they're, even if they're rich or poor, they're big. So my conclusion is the following. Does an increase in secession result in a decrease in economic growth? So increase in secession, decrease in economic growth. We see like on the one hand, yes, <laughs> because economies of scale, we win, we, uh, we gain profit. And on the other hand, no, because if it's a democratic uh, part, uh, uh, region or democrat democratic country, we can mitigate the loss by openness to trade. But on average, we see that a GDP per capita in newly independent country is 20% lower. It's like on average, if, especially if it's a violent conflict or something like that. And the second question, the last one, does an increase in economic growth result in an increase in ethno-religious conflict or violence? And you see it's, uh, it's controversial, of course, but I uh, answered like yes, because welfare regions, uh, they want independence and they want to avoid paying uh, national, uh, national burdens and they feel uh, that they can survive alone using some globalization mechanism. And uh, the, in this case, secession improves the match between public policy and individual preferences, and it allows to redistri uh, redistribute their income. So um, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.